I think they've just had a lie down. Half time then in North London. It's Spurs 1, Villa 1, which doesn't even go anywhere near to telling the story of that first 45. Have you ever seen such an open game from kickoff? Well, I think every Tottenham game's like this now because, because of the way that they play. The but this seems even more chaotic. But look, we said before the game, both these teams play this really high line. Something's got to give. And it was a brilliant first half of football. Tottenham should be way ahead, yeah. by the way. Yeah. This is the great advert for the Premier League. This is why everyone wants to watch it all around the world. It's brilliant. I mean, it's absolutely fantastic game of football. You don't know what's going to happen. You think Tottenham are in control as they was. Possession-wise, they're in control. Chances-wise, they're in control. But they're always going to give you a chance, and that's exactly what they did to Villa at the end. All right, we'll talk about the high defensive line in a second. But Spurs took the lead, of course, from a set piece. It was a great effort from La so with the help of a deflection, Tim. Yeah, it was a good strike. I mean, he's not played for a couple of years, you know, a first start for a couple of years um, for Tottenham. Um, Cons are there, should see him, he sees him, he gets attracted by, you watch Son come around the back, he gets attracted by him, takes a step to the left there, gives Luxelso enough uh, time to just weigh that up and he smashes it through. I've just got my theory, if you have a look at um, Luis there, um, sorry, Carlos, Carlos. Yeah. if he doesn't put his hands behind his back in an unnatural position, I believe it's unnatural behind his back, he shifts across and he blocks that, gets a deflection, gives Martins absolutely no chance, but I'm pleased for that kid. A minute and a half later, Villa thought they'd instantaneously equalised, but it wasn't to be. Yeah, and to be fair, it was a completely against the run of play. And again, you know, you see, you know, the, the high line, there's been space to play. And Villa, all they had to do is put a couple of passes together and get a dangerous ball in. I mean, that is, is such a great attack. And Watkins does brilliantly. He's just a fraction offside. But the space that these players can find themselves in is, is remarkable. And they're too good team, aren't they? They're yeah. going to hurt you. Even in this position, Ben Davis stops and plays offside. Vicario's convinced he's offside, but it was inches. It was so close. They're taking a chance, an unnecessary chance there. Watkins puts himself in a good position, but it was quite, quite rightly uh, ruled out. Took almost three minutes for VAR to decide for the offside. It was that tight. But then seconds before the halftime whistle, Villa get themselves back on terms. What a ball from Douglas Luiz that is, by the way. That's a hard free kick to hit from that distance to be yeah. accurate with power. I have no idea why Tottenham are that high. Again, you know, it's really difficult to play offside there. But what a ball and a brilliant header. Look, Villa didn't really deserve to be level. Yeah. But Tim nailed it. Tottenham, the way that they play, they give you a little bit of a chance. Really, they should have been out of sight. They should have been three or four up. That's all about game management. Look at the reaction there for Unai Emery. He knows his team have got away with it. Torres is a good header. He had a chance earlier on, but they have to. It's game management. They did it at Wolves. The game's won. Mm. Just see the game out. Get to half time. You've controlled the game, and they played out high. Like, I have no idea why they did that. If they drop in there and defend it properly, they go in 1 0 up. And that uh, reaction from Unai Emery is more than understandable. He could have found his side 5 0 down <laughs> after the first five minutes. I mean, from the way Spurs got at Villa was quite something. I mean, they picked their runs, didn't they? With timing and doggy this time, it's a poor finish when he's on an unnatural position for him. Um, Kulusevski, he's timing his runs perfectly. He should score there, but he's running from deeper, Owen. Yeah, I mean, it was, it was one-way traffic. Honestly, they absolutely dominated. Um, defensively, they were all over the place. The back four, Emi Martinez, Carlos gives a heel little one there. But it was literally... They just dominate Kulusevski coming inside. Hill, it's got to square that. That's, that. You get another tap in. I mean, Tottenham, going forward, they are absolutely fabulous to watch. They play brilliant stuff. That high line, Tim, again, it's, it's crazy. Yeah, incredible. But they're, they're used to it. I mean, when they're training every single day, they're training against a high line because that's how the manager wants them to play. So they're used to it and they're far better here than Villa are. Yeah. They deserve to be in front, but no doubt. So has Tottenham been good or have Villa been poor? No, v Villa have not been the same Villa as what we see at Villa. Yeah. You know, they're completely different this animals. This is Villa away from home. Absolutely, they're completely different. But Tottenham have dominated. They've had, Tottenham have got a lot of injuries. A lot of guys in there trying to prove they want a position for the rest of the season. They've done very well. Yeah. It's been a brilliant first 45 minutes. Aston Villa are into the top four after a two-on win at Tottenham. Ollie Watkins with the decisive goal with his seventh of the season. And we can hear from Villa's top scorer now alongside John McGinn. Well, congratulations, Ollie John. That must feel like a, a big three points on so many levels. Yeah, definitely. You know, they're a, a top side and um, deserve to be where they are in the league um, because of the football they're playing. So it was a really tough game and um, that's a massive three points. Um, yeah. John, some real concerns from the fans. You wouldn't be involved at all today, but to see you out there and put in a shift like that, I mean, how good were you feeling? Yeah, uh, I had a couple of knocks in the, in the Scotland games. Um, not enough to 
to keep me out of this one. Um, nah, I felt, felt alright, but the exact same injury. Uh, got a knee in the backside uh, last week. Got the same one in the first half. So it wasn't ideal, but thankfully got myself out there. And to be fair, there's a few lads playing through the, the pain barrier today and what an effort from the boys. What an effort from the Villa boys and what a season they're having once again under Unai Emery. Let's talk about Ollie Watkins' decisive goal then. I mean, talk about a backs-to-the-wall performance, but from a Villa's perspective, I mean, it was almost a perfect game plan, was it not? Yeah, and to be fair, a lot of it was kind of a little bit Unai Emery kind of inspired. You know, he made some subs at halftime and they had an impact on the game. Great football, patient football. He's just so sharp there, Tim, isn't he, Watkins? Well, he's got options. They, they were patient build-up so they can get more players forward. You see their midfield there. We've highlighted all of their midfield. Tillemans was the difference maker. I mean, he picks the right pass at the right time all of the time. You know, here, he just takes a touch. That looks simple, but the right weight of passing to Oli. Oli Watkins, just gets, he offers it. Like, slide me, Slide me in. Gets one touch and he finishes it brilliantly. Vicaro has absolutely no touch. But the, just the control and the class of Tillemans. And that's a player who cannot get a start in this side. He has to come off the bench and affect it. And he comes out off the bench with the correct attitude to make a difference. And he did that. Similar kind of finish to Haaland on Saturday, right? Took it very quickly, caught yeah. the goalkeeper off guard. Yeah, very similar. He, he's really good at that. But the reason Tillemans could go into there is mm. because it, we, we highlighted that he had the, at the base of it. He had, he had uh, Luis, he had Kamara and McGinn protecting. And credit Unai Emery, he's a, he's a smart manager. He realised he needed to change it, and it worked. Did Spurs drop too deep when Watkins was in possession? Yeah, we don't say that about Tottenham often. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Davis there, if he was van der Ven, if he was Romero, as soon as Ollie Watkins there to the right comes off him, he would have come with him. But Hoiberg has to shield. He has to be talking to him, saying, step a couple of sides to the left, that ball cannot get played into Ollie Watkins. Um, but like I say, if that was van der Ven, like Romero, I mean, we can't cry over spilt milk. Oh, look, you got to, you know, you can't isolate one from the other. Look, the result is disappointing, disappointing uh, for our fans, but particularly for our players, because I thought, um, you know, the way they played today and, you know, the kind of intent they showed, we deserve to get something out of that game. Um, on any other day, we would have won it comfortably, but i um, obviously disappointed that, A, they don't get the rewards and, you know, our supporters, they feel... Uh, you know, that, uh, that joyous feeling of winning a game of football. And, and in terms of the, the team selection today, a, a lot of changes, but I wonder how you go about it at the moment, given that there are there's so many injuries, but a lot of big players coming in in really important roles in the team as well. Yeah, look, it's, um, well, Chronicle, we're going through a tough patch in terms of um, absences from the team, but, you know, it was Rodrigo and, and Gio's and Brian's first start today, and... Um, you know, I thought all three, three of them handled themselves really well. And, you know, from my perspective, uh, I said during the week, you know, this, this is an opportunity for us to have a look at some players and see how they fit into the kind of football we want to play. And I thought all three handled themselves really well. There's so many positives there today, Ange. You know, obviously we've lost and that, and that, that overrides everything. But the, some of the performances out there and the, the whole performance was really good. It's so deserved to get something out of that. Yeah, we, we did. Um, yeah, look, like I said, I was really pleased with the football we played today. It's as good as we played some in patches as we have all year. And uh, obviously, we didn't get um, you know, the, the, the kind of rewards we, we our play deserved. Um, and sometimes that happens in football. It's fine margins. But you know, from what I'm looking for from the lads and you know, how we prepared them for the game, I just thought you know, they went out there with a real intent to, to kind of play the football we want to play. Obviously, we lost uh, Rodrigo again, which was an absolute bitter blow. What's, what's the latest, end? Yeah, not really sure. You know, I'm disappointed to lose him because he started the game so well. You can see his quality, and I think it's the reason we, we got a real good foothold of the game. And I think it was a great tackle on him, you know, and obviously him coming back from, you know, a really serious injury, you're concerned about it. But um, from what I understand, it's not, you know, it's, it's his ankle rather than his knee. But, um, yeah, it's not what we need right now, another injury. So, um, but it's what we're going through. And when you see the disallowed goals today, the marginal offsides, do you see those moments as uh, Sonny had three? Is it bad luck, in your view, or are these areas to improve and understanding in terms of runs in the team? No, it's, not, it's not bad luck, and it's not, it's not about improving. It's just fine margins. You know, you're always, you're always playing on the edge. But, you know, for those goals that got disallowed, we had another seven or eight that were just as good opportunities that, you know, Keepers making good saves or hitting the post. Um, we're just missing that final pass. So, you know, we, we, we're always going to play on the edge and sometimes those things will go against you. And you know, we've had a few go sort of fine margins go against us. But again, in the long term, I still think we'll get the benefits of that. And playing well and losing is the toughest one to take, mm -hmm. isn't it? What, what have you said to him afterwards? 
No, not really. I mean, I, I was a lot more disappointed after the Wolves game because I just don't think we played anywhere near the kind of football we wanted. Today is a different feeling. Like I said, I'm just disappointed that <clears throat> the players don't get the rewards for, for what they put in. And, and you want them to feel that because when they do, it, it kind of gathers more belief amongst them. Um, but I, I still don't get the sense that they're, they're wavering in any way. You know, they're still really committed to us being the, the kind of football team we want to be. And, you know, we'll get players back over the next two, three months. And if we keep going down this road, we'll, we'll get to a place where, you know, we'll, we'll start getting the rewards for what we um, for our play. Uh, just, just finally, Andrew, given the, the month that we have ahead, huge games, but a lot of games as well, how do you go about the, the planning for that? Do you just take it one game at a time? Are you trying to look at this period of games and, and make a plan for as many as you can? No, nah, to be honest, with, you know, with the kind of injury list we've got at the moment, and you know, we, we, we really can only look at a game at a time, really a day at a time, because, um, like I said, we, we've got you know, 10 out at the moment out of a, our senior list, and you know, we'll see how bent and core is. But we only really get Biss back next week, and you know, hopefully and we'll get Romero the week after. But the rest of them, we don't expect them to be back for the next you know, pre-Christmas. So all these kind of things are challenges. But as I said, if, if the lads keep showing the same intent they did today, we'll get through this period and we'll come out a stronger team. But Spurs had their chances, Owen, particularly in that first half. In fact, particularly in the first five minutes into the second half, and we had much of the same. This is a fabulous attack, by the way. Yeah. yeah. Kulusevski into Son. Johnson, you just got to be there at the back post. But they, look, the good thing about Tottenham is they create. They create tons. That one he probably should have squared to Johnson Son there. Heel had one in the first half he probably should have squared, but offensively, Tim, they're, they're such a good watch, but they, they need to take their chances. Yeah, they need to take their chances. You've always got a chance, you feel, when you play against Tottenham and you feel like they're going to give you a chance um, because some of their defending is, is really is rash. You know, the defending is really poor. I think they're a very good defending side when, they, when they're winning the ball back in the opposition half. But in their own half, I think the defending is quite rash. But the goalkeepers had to make a few good saves. They haven't played bad today, Tottenham. Don't get me wrong, they haven't played bad, but they haven't got a result again. And, and Villa, just in the, in the second half, we said Unai Emery, his team had got away with going in 1-1 at half-time. He had to change something. And he got into him and he changed the midfield to give him a little bit more control. And we'll show you the control. We'll show you when you have passed through the ball, it's like taking medicine. You feel better. You feel like you're having the ball. <laughs> look, there you go. Everyone feels better now. Like they're, they look almost like they're having control of the game. And they're picking up second balls. Tillemans, all the time, Owen picks the right pass. Yeah, all of them. And they're all ball players. You know, they wanted the ball. They didn't have much of it in the first half. But they realise they'll get a moment and they control the game. They control the tempo. You, you get 2-1 up and then you keep it. Keep them. And t- Tim makes a really interesting point. Tottenham, when they defend high, they're really good. When they get here, they, they look a pretty ordinary side defensively. Mm. And these are experienced players, aren't they, Tim? Yeah. They, they, they get a feel for the game. They knew they had it under control and they just picked and popped. But that all comes from a manager that's won the Europa League about 100 times. Absolutely. That's experience. That's experience from this man. He knows exactly what he's doing. Practically so astute. Yeah. He showed it once again there. And you touched on the fact that how Spurs ran out of energy in the second half. Yeah. Because they put so much into that first half, did they? They were brilliant first half. Even with the changes, they were really, really good. They got away with a good start. I mean, Lo Celso smashes this one. He, uh, it's concentration. That's a hard strike mm. when it comes across your body and he took it brilliantly. You think that deflection on Diego Carlos could have been avoided, right? I think if he doesn't put his hands behind the back, I think he moves himself in line with that shot and takes it in the uh, never region. Seven minutes minutes into the uh, injury time of that first half. Pau Torres, but the delivery from Douglas Luiz. Oh, the delivery is fantastic. I mean, that is just inviting Torres to attack that. I mean, that was a game to run a play. I mean, that's the understatement of the day, a game to run a play. Tottenham dominated, but Villa got that goal. Emery makes changes and they can go on and win the game from there. It's been a terrific match week so far. But of course, there's still more drama to come your way today.